So Resident Evil tells the story of a group of soldiers and a few civilians locked in an underground laboratory with the undead. Welcome to the Resident Evil review series, everybody. Next week, we've got the newest film, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, hitting theaters. I'm very excited about it. I thought the trailer was awesome, and uh, I have all of my fingers and toes crossed that we're finally going to get a great Resident Evil movie and a great video game adaptation. But we'll see. We'll talk about that next week. But for now, I wanted to talk about these six Resident Evil movies in the Paul W.S. Anderson franchise. I'm not going to be talking about the animated movies. Uh, I haven't seen any of them. I don't plan to see them just yet. Not really a big animation guy, but I did want to talk about this re this movie series because it's a bit of a guilty pleasure series for me. I don't think any of them are outright great movies. I don't think any of them are very good adaptations of the games, but I've grown up with this franchise. I can certainly sit down and enjoy most of these movies and get entertainment value out of all of them, but it is a fun franchise to discuss for all the good and for all the bad. So, starting off with the original film that came out in 2002. This came out when I was 12 years old. I hadn't even played any of the Resident Evil games yet when I first saw this movie. My first Resident Evil game was Resident Evil 4, which came out in 2005. So I actually saw the first two movies in this franchise before seeing and playing any of the games. So I had a little bit of a different perspective walking into the movies. Obviously my perspective has changed drastically now as an adult decades after these movies have come out. But when this first came out, it was a pretty big deal for what I remember. It was still very early on as far as video game adaptations. The guy that took over this franchise and, and gave all of these movies was the guy that gave us Mortal Kombat, which I still hold true is probably the best video game movie ever made. It's not a very high bar, but uh, at the time, that was a damn good movie for me. And so this guy bringing Resident Evil to the screen, the trailer showing a lot of the classic zombies and the dogs and the liquors and the action, it just had everything that 12-year-old Cody wanted. It wasn't an instant favorite for me, but for mindless horror action, this movie was very entertaining and it was one that I revisited quite often in my youth. Now, as far as a bit of history with this movie, there was quite a few attempts at getting a Resident Evil film off the ground after the first game succeeded so much on the original PlayStation. And one of the early versions of this movie actually came from George Romero. Now, which is funny about that is the video games very unapologetically have a lot of homage and a lot of inspiration to the old school Romero of the dead movies. And so once he found out about that, he did a he filmed a commercial for Resident Evil 2, which is pretty neat. It's a nice little piece of nostalgia there if you want to check that out. But he eventually got interest in writing a treatment for a Resident Evil adaptation. He had his secretary play all the games and record the footage so that he could kind of watch them and get an idea of what the story was. And he turned in about five or six different versions of his script trying to get approved that was very loyal to the story and the lore of the first game. There was a couple liberties changed. There were some things that were different about his version of Chris Redfield, but it took place at the Arclay Mansion. It took place going all the way down into the the lab underneath the mansion. It had all the characters here. It had Jill and Chris as the leads. It had Wesker as the villain. Expanded out some of the side roles like Barry Burton. So it was a very, or what should have been a very faithful adaptation of the video game. But all of the people in production that owned the rights did not think that they could get that version of the movie made without an NC-17 rating. At least that's the excuse they give. So they passed on it five or six times and eventually Paul W.S. Anderson got the job. And like I said, Back in the day, he actually had a pretty decent name for himself. He just did Mortal Kombat. He did Event Horizon, which I think is a pretty damn good little space Hellraiser type movie. He wasn't the Paul W.S. Anderson that today people would hear that name and cringe. So this was a good choice on paper. Unfortunately, his approach, and he's quoted as saying this, was to have absolutely zero ties whatsoever to the video games because in his mind, all the video game adaptations that tried to have all the direct ties and very directly adapt stories and characters of the video games all failed, so he decided not to even bother with it. I have huge problems with that, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So in 2002, the movie came out. Not very good reviews from critics, you know, a little bit mixed at best. Some critics liked it, some didn't. Some fans liked it, some, di some didn't. Casual movie audiences liked it okay. It was a financial success. And it was enough of a success to get five more of these movies. This is one of the most financially successful movie series of all time, quality notwithstanding. But uh, nonetheless, there is a bit of a legacy with this film franchise, and you gotta have your hats off to that. I mean, they did something right 
didn't they? But talking about this first movie specifically and the positives of Resident Evil, I do think that this movie does have some cool atmosphere and does have a cool tone and a cool pace to it. It's very much a heightened action version of the games and the games hadn't even taken that direction yet. Resident Evil 4 was very much the game that catapulted the more action side of the Resident Evil games. So this was taking the setting, taking some of the monsters, taking little pieces of the lore and making a very isolated action horror film. And for what they're going for, for that approach, I think they do a mostly competent job. There's some good action sequences here, certainly for 2002. There's some good horror sequences. The designs on most of the zombies and designs on most of the monsters like the Cerberus dogs and the liquor Okay, not so much the liquor, so we'll talk about that too, but a lot of the effects and a lot of the visuals of the game, they're brought together here pretty decent. I like most of the characters in this first movie. They don't have a ton to do. I think the script lets them down a little bit. A lot of them just kind of become stock military characters, or you get Alice, who ends up becoming the, the face of this franchise. She gets the most to do, the most to kind of grow here as a character, the most arc if you will. You get Rain, played by Michelle Rodriguez, who is one of the more bad bitches of this franchise, and she's a cool character. She's one that I wouldn't have minded seeing her come back for a couple more movies. And then you even get guys like Matt, who, not the best actor in the world, you know, I thought that he was not very good in The Crow Salvation. He's a little bit better here, but he's an interesting dynamic as this guy that comes in seemingly as an innocent cop and has a little bit more of an ulterior motive, a little bit more of a personal motivation for being in this situation. So for character development, again, decent enough job. I absolutely love that laser sequence. I think most people, if not everybody across the world would agree that that is the best sequence in the movie where you get people getting decapitated and the guy jumps to try to dodge a laser and it goes up with him, cuts him in half, and then culminating in the ultimate piece de resistance of carnage candy in this movie where the guy, the thing spirals into a big grid and right after, right before it gets shut down, it goes all the way through his body and turns him into a Jenga board and he just fucking falls to the floor. Shit. Got it. For the time, that was a gnarly ass scene. They could have more gore in it if they really wanted to, and that's probably the direction that George Romero wanted to go, but for the visuals of that scene, for the excitement, for the tension that they're going for, that is a standout scene for this whole franchise. And I like the look of the hive, you know, the umbrella laboratory type settings. I mean, they've all kind of been the same in the games for the most part. This took a little bit more of a futuristic look. Uh, this gave it a little bit more of a cyberpunk vibe almost to a certain degree where it wasn't just white, clean medical hallways. This has much more of a cool, more futuristic look to it throughout. So as a setting for all the carnage of this movie, works pretty well. I really like the score here too, like the, the musical theme of this first Resident Evil movie. Marilyn Manson actually helped out with creating this one. And I think it has a cool, unique vibe to it. I actually wish this score had returned more and was more of a through line throughout the franchise instead of being something that's exclusive to this first movie because it works. It's a really cool score. Now moving on to the mixed, the main one here is the character of Alice and more so because of the legacy of what she became in this franchise. Not so much about this first movie, but it's impossible to separate it once you've seen all of them. I think that she's a good enough character here for the story that they are telling, this isolated, separate from the game storyline. And I think that she works good as a main character, as somebody that you're kind of unsure about. She's got some mystery to her. Eventually shows that she might have been a bad person, but is choosing to be a good person now. And she's got a good heart. and She's trying to save as many people as she can by the end of it. And you do end up rooting for her. I like Mila Jovovich. I think that she is a good physical actress. Again, not utilized the best. I wish she would do movies outside of her husband's filmography more, but she is a good character for this movie. Unfortunately, I don't think that she's a good enough character to have ran this entire franchise. And I think one of the biggest gripes that video game fans have is that they take away way too much focus and way too much heart from the actual video game characters from the Resident Evil franchise and give it all to Alice. And so by the time you get a couple movies in, you grow frustrated with her character. Even though you may like her, even though you like the actress, even though she's cool to watch and she's a very capable physical presence for action horror movies, 
it's disappointing that this character that was invented for the movies steals all of the limelight and steals all of the thunder of all the characters that most of us are actually here to see. Now moving on to the negatives. While this might be a mediocre to good action movie, while it might be a mediocre to good action horror movie, even just a passable zombie movie if you just like zombies and you just appreciate any movie that has those types of threats in it. This is a terrible Resident Evil movie, all stemming from that approach that Paul W.S. Anderson had where he didn't want to have any direct ties to the video games because he thought that was like the kiss of death. Now. Years have passed since this movie, and I still hold true that the reason why most of the video game movies we get are absolute shit and just do not connect with the audience and the fan base at all is because they take too many liberties with the lore and the story and the characters of the video games. I mean, look at the Uncharted movie that we're getting, and even though it looks like a very capable, competent, huge summer blockbuster, most of the fans of the franchise are angry at it because it's ignoring everything that we know and love about the games and doing their own thing with all of it, just taking liberties with all of it. Just like all movies, you have to have a good director, you have to have a good script, you have to have capable actors, you have to have everybody working behind the scenes at the top of their game to make a good film, but the extra element of doing a video game adaptation, to make a good video game adaptation, you got to adapt the fucking game. Resident Evil is one of those games that is literally a blueprinted movie or miniseries right fucking there. The mansion, the motivations of the villains, the mystery that's unfolded throughout, the relationships, the characters, the monsters, it is all right there. It is fucking gift packaged for you to adapt. Why? Over and over and over and fucking over again. Hollywood decides to take all of that and just start throwing shit around and be like, all right, we'll take a piece of this, we'll take a little bit of this, and uh, we'll do our own thing. Thanks, guys, we got it from here. And they always, almost universally, fuck it up because that approach from the beginning is not the right approach. And like I've said, I get enjoyment out of this movie. This whole franchise to me is a guilty pleasure. I can't defend to a lot of things. If you hate it, I totally understand it, but I get entertainment value out of it. But the one thing that I will always agree with and never quite understand is that this is not how to adapt Resident Evil. This is not what Resident Evil is. It's not about anything that you are making these movies about. It's almost like Paul W.S. Anderson never even played the games, which he claims he's a huge fan, but the studio just sent him an email with some bullet points of what to include in his movie, like uh, umbrella, zombies, dogs, liquors, shooting, make movie, thumbs up. Beyond all of that, the script as far as the dialogue, certainly not the best. That has been one of the weaknesses of Paul W.S. Anderson's films pretty much all across the board in his entire career. And though there are very capable actors here, Michelle Rodriguez and Mila Jovovich namely, they don't really get a whole lot to do script-wise. There's not really any punchy dialogue. There's not a whole lot of development for the other characters aside from Alice, which becomes a growing problem in this franchise as we move on. And there's nothing that makes all the side characters, all the actual like umbrella, almost hunk characters stand out. They all just seem like the same character five different ways because you don't get to know any of them. There's nothing about them that stands out that differentiates them from the other characters. You just end up with less of them as the movie goes on and they, might, they could switch those characters out in the script would make no difference. It never used to bother me because back in 2002 the whole laser grid sequence felt like it was groundbreaking for kills and for gore even though now it looks in retrospect it's very tame. There's not enough gore in this movie and again that's one of the reasons why it's frustrating as a horror fan to know that George Romero wanted to do a version of this and they didn't want to go that far with it. Why? I'll never understand that either, but the kills in this movie, the zombie violence, the eating, the chewing, it's a very tame zombie movie. If you took out the nudity from Mila Jovovich that bookends this movie, this could very easily be a PG-13 movie with a couple of quick edits, and that's not exactly Resident Evil either. Resident Evil goes for it. This is B-movie horror at its finest. I know when they were adapting this, they put a little bit more focus into adding some, you know, shooty-shooty bang-bangs and some roundhouse, roadhouse kicks and everything like that, but 
you still gotta please us horror fans, so I could have used a lot more gore in this movie. Speaking on effects, for the most part, the movie does a good job, like I'd already talked about, as far as adapting the zombies, adapting the Cerberus dogs, but there is some visual effects in this first movie that do not age well, and might not have even really been that good in 2002, I honestly can't remember, but the liquor effects is way too computer generated. Uh, there's moments of practicality once it turns into the super liquor, which is another element I don't like at all, but the regular classic liquor design is like a video game effect in this movie and it just does not work well. They actually look better in further movies. Just the very next movie we're gonna talk about, the liquors look much better. So stands out as being a big downer for Resident Evil fans to see such an iconic monster brought together in kind of a shitty way in this film. And there's even some digital effects on some of the zombies where you can tell there wasn't actual makeup, they just overlaid something on somebody's face. That also doesn't age very well. I don't think digital zombies is something that works ever. And my final negative is that this movie doesn't really feel like it stands out a whole lot within the zombie subgenre. Even if you're not a fan of Resident Evil and you just watch this on its own merits as a film, because they spend so much time doing direct callbacks to Romero films and other films of this genre, like the elevator opening up and all the zombies grabbing somebody, showing somebody an uh, undead zombie walking on like a broken foot. And there's so many sequences and shots and visuals in this movie that is just directly from other movies, which is meant as an homage. Like I said, the video games itself were unashamed about being an homage to Romero. So the movie kind of carried on with that a little bit, but when you homage movies that are classics of this genre and you do it so much throughout your film, you feel derivative, you feel repetitive, you feel like you're not really adding anything and we don't really feel like we're getting anything new out of your movie because all you're doing is reminding us visually of something else and something better. Actually, you know what? I have one more negative because I just reminded myself that there's this whole Alice in Wonderland theme in this movie that feels very weird. It feels weird for a Resident Evil movie, but it also feels weird because they don't continue that on at all in this franchise. Like if there was some creative element to where all of these Resident Evil sequels took some kind of a theme from Alice in Wonderland or some kind of a theme from some famous literary work like that and worked it into the Resident Evil plot, that actually might be something that would have been cool for just standing out in this franchise, but they only do it in this one film where literally your lead character's name is Alice, the villain is the Red Queen, the whole thing about going down the elevator into the hive is like going down the rabbit hole. I mean, there is a lot of references to Alice in Wonderland in this, which just, like I said, because it's one movie, why? Why are we doing that? Why don't you give some Resident Evil references? But overall, guys, this is a decent movie. It's a guilty pleasure for me. I can have fun with it when I throw it on. I don't watch it very often, every three, four years maybe, but I do enjoy it when I do go through a couple of these Resident Evil films. They kind of, I view them as something separate from the video games and that allows me to enjoy them more as representations and as adaptations of the video game series big fail. So if you're a fan of the video games, there's going to be a lot of things here that is going to upset and frustrate you. But if you separate that in your head, or if you are not familiar with the Resident Evil franchise, this is a passable, decent, good time of action horror. So check it out online and stream it. So what do you guys think of the original Resident Evil? Are you a fan of this movie? Are you a fan of the Resident Evil franchise? What did you watch first or play first? And what is your favorite movie in this franchise? Let me know down below and we will talk about it. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're a fan of Resident Evil. I've done quite a few videos covering the video games, individual reviews, rankings of the games, rankings of the bosses, some of the characters. So check out all of that backlog content if you are a fan. But for the future, I am going to go through all six of these movies and then eventually the new film and rank all seven of these movies over the next two weeks. So if you're a fan, hit the subscribe button so you do not miss any of that. Thank you guys for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.